Hi, welcome back to AP Physics 1. This is topic 1.2, displacement, velocity, and acceleration. So in the last video, we, we kind of set this up by talking about vectors and scalar quantities. Uh, now we're going to look at specific uh, physics terminology um, and get into some of the basic equations that we will need throughout this journey. Okay, so the first thing is like, what is an object? So when we describe an object, we're going to ignore everything about it, like the size, the shape, and internal configuration. So we're just going to treat it as one single thing. Um, so we talk about like a car traveling at 50 miles per hour. We're not going to look at like the tires, the person, the, you know, the seats. It's just going to be one giant car. Okay. Now, displacement um, is the change in an object's position. So I didn't really define what position was here, but position is just simply a location. And that location is based on an origin, right? So if you think about it, it's like a number line from math. And displacement is when you change your number line uh, location. So if I go from like zero to five, okay, I have displaced myself from the origin to a position of five. That means my displacement is five units, okay? Now, mathematically, displacement is um, delta x is equal to x minus xo. So something to note is that when you don't see a subscript, that means final. And when you do see a subscript, um, the subscript O or zero, not, whatever you want to call it, that means initial. So here we would subtract our final position from our initial position, and that gives us the displacement. Now, something that we're going to talk about and distinguish a lot about here in, in, you know, in physics is like the word average. Okay, so average is not your mathematical average. That's one thing to, to get out of your minds. Average is essentially um, calculated between the initial and the final states of an object over an interval of time. Um, so another way we talk about it is rate, right? So, so in the last video, we talked briefly about the DRT problems in math class. So a lot of the things we're going to talk about when we change a quantity with respect to time, we're talking about a rate. But we're talking about that in terms of average. So the first thing, average velocity. So average velocity is the displacement of an object divided by the time interval over which that displacement occurs. So velocity, it is a vector quantity, uh, much like displacement is. I should put my little arrows, right? So display velocity is displacement over time. Now. There is a scalar quantity very similar to uh, velocity. In fact, uses the same symbol, right? And that's speed. Um, that is simply distance over time. Um, and the way you think about really the difference is distance is like a Google Maps um, scenario, right? So when you um, put in a, you know two addresses and at the end it tells you, hey, you're gonna travel this far, they're giving you a distance. Now, what they'll do is they'll also give you, you know, an average speed, okay? So what does that mean? That is the dis distance over the time they want, to, want you to calculate it in, okay? Now, velocity, again, will have that, um, di that direction attached to it. Now, on the flip side, right, so if we accelerate an object, we're going to change the velocity. Um, so what that means is we're changing the velocity with respect to time. And that gives us an acceleration. So acceleration, right, is change in velocity over change in time. So whenever people talk about like, hey, my car goes from zero to 60 in this many seconds, they say that's really fast. Well, you don't say it's really fast. You say it's really quick, right, because you're changing that zero to 60. So you're changing your velocity or speed, right, in that short of a time, okay? It has nothing to do with the fast. Like I have a Volkswagen Atlas. I can get to 60 miles per hour, but I'm going to do it in a shorter or longer time period than let's say, you know, a Lamborghini, right? Because that's what they're designed. So we both can travel at 60 miles per hour, but the Lamborghini is going to have a quicker acceleration. All right. 
Now, an object is accelerating, basically, if the magnitude and or direction of the object changes over time. So what does that mean? You can change the, you can play around with the magnitude, right? So I can keep the direction the same, but change the magnitude, right, of which my, you know, velocity changes. Now, the other way you think about it is direction. So the direction, if that changes as well, then we are technically accelerating, okay? So in a car, right, we have different ways we accelerate, right? So we have the gas pedal and the brake pedal. That's our accelerations. Um, then we have the steering wheel. That changes our direction. Okay, we're going to focus a lot of this constant velocity, constant speed with change of direction when we talk about circular motion. Right now, a lot of what we're going to do is just simply change the magnitude of the velocity. Um, and then that will help. But that will also tell us that we accelerate. Now, this is a little bit where calculus comes into play. So if the time interval between the initial and final states of the average velocity and acceleration are small, as in, small meaning that delta t approaches zero, then we have what is called instantaneous velocity or instantaneous acceleration. So that means at a particular moment in time. So for example, a speedometer, which you see here on the slide, that tells us an instantaneous speed or velocity. In fact, it would just tell us an instantaneous speed because we don't know what direction we're heading. So that means if I look down at my speedometer at a particular moment in time, then I'm getting you know, that's my speed at that moment. Again, this is where calculus does come into play. So if you venture into calculus or you're taking it now already, um, you will learn about the process to figure out instantaneous speed and velocity. Or instantaneous, yeah, instantaneous velocity, instantaneous acceleration. All right, so let's go and do a, um, an example problem. Now, uh, before we jump into the example, so these equations sometimes don't appear on the formula sheet but these are what we call definition equations so they define the quantity right not as much as a derived equation which means that we get it from somewhere else as in like a different equation a graph right or so forth so you have to distinguish between what is a def definition versus what is a derived equation okay now let's move into that example problem All right, so here's an example. So we have cyclist riding three kilometers west, turns around and goes two kilometers east. Question is, what is their displacement? And then what is the distance traveled? If they do this trip in 16 minutes, what is a cyclist's average speed? And then what is their average velocity? Okay, so let's start with the displacement. So the way we think about it, east is the positive direction, west is the negative direction. So what they're doing is they're going, three kilometers west, right? And sometimes it may be helpful to draw a picture, right? So I'm gonna go three kilometers west. So I'm at negative three kilometers. And then I'm gonna turn around and go two kilometers, right? In the positive direction. So my final position, right? Or what is my displacement? So, my initial position is zero meters and I end at two, or sorry, these are kilometers. So my final position is two kilometers and my initial position is All right, so excuse me, my final, I forgot the negative sign. So my final position is negative two kilometers. My initial position is uh, zero kilometers, so that tells me my displacement is negative two kilometers. Now, when I want to find the distance, I just get rid of all the signs because distance is an example of a scalar quantity. So I know one part of the leg I went three kilometers, the other part of the leg I went two kilometers, right? So I had a final distance of five kilometers. So when you talk about distance, it doesn't matter that you went east to west, west to east. It just means you went three kilometers and then two kilometers. Um, now, what if they do this in 16 minutes? What is their average speed? What is their average velocity? So again, speed, distance over time. And we'll just leave it in a unit of kilometers per minute, which is fine. Um, so I wrote a two, it should be a one. All right, so we do it five kilometers in 16 minutes. 
So I got my handy dandy calculator. So it's 0 0.31 kilometers per minute. If you want to know what that is in kilometers per hour, right? Remember, you can convert kilometers to hours or minutes to, to hours by simply multiplying 60 minutes. Um, now, if we want to find our velocity, we're doing our displacement over time. And so we displaced negative two kilometers. We're doing that in 16 minutes. And again, that negative sign is important because it's telling us that we, we end up on the left hand side. Um, so two divided by 16. So it's going to be negative 0 0.13 kilometers per minute. Okay, so as you can see, right, velocity is a vector, speed is a scalar, right? So you can see that the speed is going to be different than the velocity. That's because they turned. If it was straight line, their speed and velocity would actually be the same. So if you think about like a 100 meter dash, okay. All right, so that ends this talk about uh, position, velocity, acceleration, distance, displacement. Um, in the next video, we're going to talk about how do we represent motion because in AP Physics 1 and in fact in AP Physics C, how we represent the motion is, is very important.